Good night, good night, everybody. Welcome again to another session, another Thursday session. And I'm really, really excited with all my red and everything. I have not one, but two stalwarts in the entertainment cultural industry. I got RPB and Adonijah. Yes. Welcome, welcome to the show. Thank you, my pleasure. Yes. We also have our regulars, Dwayne and David. So just wanted to make sure that everybody can hear us. So if you can, you just make a comment or drop an emoticon, anything to let us know that you can hear us properly before we go too far into the show. So just give a few seconds. There we go. Perfect. All right. So we get right into the meat of the matter. First off, there's a lot of questions about what exactly is the idea. Two minutes. Ah, you want to share it on the... We're going to share three yes. feeds. Pardon? Yeah, just, yeah. just wait for people... We're going to share it on the different pages so that everybody can get on board. Welcome everybody, welcome, welcome. Glad, thank you for joining. You can give him two seconds so that he can share. Working again. <laughs> You good to go? I think we're good. You're Everybody, good. yeah. So yes. we're getting uh, feedback. Sounds good. So we're good. So, David, you wanted our two guests to give a tribute. A few words here. We're discussing the entertainment industry. Just wanted to invite Alina or PB to give their thoughts uh, on the red, um, husband, sorry, mm -hmm. who has been a star in the entertainment mm -hmm. industry as well. Um, just share a few thoughts before we get into discussing. The status of the industry and where we go from here. Cool. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I guess I can say that we're going to miss Boo Boo, you know? Because Boo was one of the driving forces behind it, behind if one of them call it an industry or whatever, a population or a class <laughs> thing or whatever. <laughs> but, and the gimmick I talk about Boo Boo, saying something comical, you know? Yeah. Because that is the way that everyone always remember Boo. You know, that as a man who, in the most trying circumstances, but always find some way to, to make you see the funny side of it, you know. As a musician, he's a great musician, you know, an excellent band leader, the whole thing. What used to, I used to marvel at the pool was how easily he could just walk into a room and hear the fellas rehearsing and say, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Without looking at the chair or anything, nah, nah, nah. He wasn't supposed to have a nice day, he wasn't supposed to, you know, and, and get it correctly. Mm -hmm. And one last thing, I will always remember both for this. One night at which I was going to St. Joseph, when they went into the studio, I saw a lady who had a beautiful moves in her bush. Mm -hmm. So I asked her, please, you know, can you come up, come to me, Mr. So I came up the studio. Mm -hmm. I was waiting for this piece of it was very kind of home plan. Mm -hmm. The same thing, who walked on the road and came in. Yeah, wait, what are you doing here? He said, what are you doing here, Mr. Rosemary? I'm going to my next door. He said, Rosemary, huh? You thought it was ready. You know, you better be careful don't get some sweet last in the state. But I first of all I want to um, extend uh, um, condolences to the family and mm -hmm. friends of Abu Husbands. I was a business partner of Abu Husband. We started having this tent together. Okay. Had some wonderful years. Uh, building the tent. But it, uh, as Ado said, it was a very funny sign to go, um, even though situations were serious. Mm -hmm. He had a way of making you laugh. He would call sometimes very early in the morning, and there's always some joke. Everything was funny. And he was a very serious man, and, and as a musician, he mm -hmm. took music very seriously. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember him as a little boy, singing in the tent, and people used to see it as a joke. Who never saw it as a joke? Mm -hmm. Who was very serious about what he was doing, because he always wanted to bring a message. We're gonna miss him. Uh, an accomplished musician, in my opinion, and uh, one who contributed significantly to the music industry in Bali. Appreciate that. I just wanted to build a little on what you would have mentioned about him taking it seriously. And he talked to many persons in the industry that they take their art very seriously. Yet it seems as though even amongst yourselves, it's seen as though the cultural industry is not seen as something very serious in Barbados at least. So I don't know if you have any comment with regards to that. Well, uh, 
my my thing is that there's a certain mindset in Barbados. Mm -hmm. Barbados is not black anyway. Yeah. And uh, we don't focus a lot on culture. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, most people look at culture as just a side thing that people do. Yes. So when we create music, uh, people tend to think that we are doing this because maybe there's nothing else for us to do. Mm -hmm. But we take what we do seriously. Mm -hmm. It's my view that um, the creative industries, um, which the culture in industry is very part of, mm -hmm. will drive the world economy in the near future, if it's not doing it already. Mm -hmm. And the, the reality is that whenever there's crisis, culture thrives. Okay. Like whenever there's crisis, culture thrives simply because of the fact that people are more expressive mm -hmm. and when things are rough, people get more creative mm -hmm. in terms of ways to make to money survive. To survive. Yeah. And to survive. So, um, in, in reality, you, the cultural industries and the creative industries mm -hmm. are extremely important. And, but here, in this part of the world, we tend not to take these things seriously. We tend to look more at the, the academic side of, 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 of things and not focus on, on the creative industries. Yeah, perhaps we should start with the question as to whether or not there really is a music industry. <laughs> I took a the music show before it came down. It's definitely <laughs> the industry. And it was defined as a branch of trade or manufacture. Mm -hmm. So I guess in that loose aspect, yes, we have a, uh, an entertainment industry because we are manufacturing some things, yeah? And we, there is something to trade with them. Okay. But in terms of a focus and dedicated organizational structure for entertainment, we don't have that. So in that sense, we don't have an industry. We had one mm -hmm. back in the 60s and 70s. Don't be playing the spooch. We don't okay. days we're putting on records every week. Mm -hmm. A market and one that's stressed at the end that I'm not only thinking of entertainment as music. Right. Yeah. 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 You had records going on every week, you had a top ten. Mm -hmm. Right. You had, let's say on a Saturday night, you had a chance, a choice of about three different dances in the north mm -hmm. and about four in Christchurch in the city yeah. with different bands, yeah. right? Each of whom carried the community with them. So mm -hmm. every dance had a good attendance. Mm -hmm. That was then. Even as recently as the nineties, you could hear lady music just about every night in the gap. Yeah. On and that as well. Yeah. On and that as well. That was one of the things I wanted to mention because as a person who was literally born into when you guys were performing and I, I did a wrong for it a little bit, not that long, but a little bit. But I remember growing up singing your songs and I'm sure you guys would have seen the changes as the times have gone on. So you would have mentioned that you find that the cultural industries thrive in times of struggle. Would you say that this period that we're going through right now is a time of struggle compared to times in the past? Because you would have mentioned the 60s, the 70s, comparing to the 80s, 90s, and now. Would you consider this a time of struggle? And is that why certain industries, well, Another thing is to define what you consider to be success. Do you consider them to be successful based on your definition of success in this time now? And do you consider now to be a time of struggle? Well, I, I think that people who are considered successful at this mm -hmm. time, um, I, I think that we are worse off than the people back in the 70s who were working, say, in the hotel industry. Okay. Those fellows did much better. As a matter of fact, some of the people who are working in the hotels now, mm -hmm. they're earning less than what people earn back then. You're talking about amazingly less in terms of the fact that it's less buying power for the money, or it, actually, this is actually making five hundred back then and making four hundred now. This is actually less for the dollar. Wow. And there's a point that then it's just on the right. to make on the power um, program for the Wow. Well. And that is indeed very very sad. Yeah. Um, I, I think that as it relates to. The, the product that we present mm -hmm. to the world, uh, the tourism product, mm -hmm. is amazing. Yeah. That we never thought seriously of making our entertainment part of that. Yeah. Uh, who we are culturally is really who we are. Mm -hmm. And I think that what we sell to people as an experience must involve our culture mm -hmm. in a big way. So that when people go away from us, that they, they know something about us. Right. It, it, it creates a, a better and stronger impression yes. when people know exactly who you are mm -hmm. and, and what you do. So we have failed miserably in terms of, um, of, of exposing our entertainers or allowing our entertainers mm -hmm. to be part of the package. People say it's too expensive to have entertainers there, but um, I think, again, it's how you view entertainment. 
you, you entertainment is just a side thing. Yeah. Entertainment is not a side show. As a matter of fact, music is is um is still a huge money earner all over the world. The world, uh, yeah, it is. But entertainment is not just music. No. Well, well, are people going to take your point about the missed opportunity? But can you elaborate a bit with a few examples? The areas where we should have been embracing the culture and given this experience that we mm -hmm. have either ignored or allowed to pass. And, and I'm not blaming the entertainers because I understand there are several different players in terms of promoting entertainment. But just a few examples. I know one of them clearly would be having regular entertainment on the hotel circuit, for example. But can you give us okay. some other ideas? And okay, well, a few years ago, a um, few years back, Brazil um, introduced quotas on radio, mm -hmm. where um, the fifty percent of music played on radio had to be, had to be, had to be local. Had to be local. Mm -hmm. One of the things that that we have to look at is the amount of music that we play that is local. Yes. If we play more local music, we would energize our our, our local entertainment. Yeah. Right. We have fallen short with regards to that. We have a lot of good DJs on radio. Mm -hmm. who play music well, but in truth and in fact, a lot of them are DJs that came out of clubs and, and are known on radio. Mm -hmm. And it is all about the audience listening to them. Uh, they want to generate that kind of interest. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. But I think we have to take a, a broader look mm -hmm. at our music and what and Barbies and what we want to project. Mm -hmm. There's no way, there's no way that people are going to take us seriously if we don't take ourselves seriously. Yeah. So we have to first of all play more local music. I wish that every single month was November. <laughs> that's when you hear all the local music coming. That's when you hear all the local, yeah. all the local music. But there's another side to that, and the mm -hmm. other side to that is that when we play more foreign music, more foreign exchange goes over to the country. Yep. Which I think is an element that the average listener may not understand. Right. In terms when of we cost, cost yes. yes. Yeah. When we play more foreign music as well, we promote their music to our people, mm -hmm. making it easy to bring them to Barbados mm -hmm. to put on a show. Yes. If we are not if we are not played that amount in another country, mm -hmm. there is no way that they can take us to that country to promote us because then we don't we won't have the same pull. Yeah. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So in all ways we are sending more money out to the country. Be before, money that we can use to, to promote our entertainment. Before we go, um just for the benefit of people who don't understand what cost cap yeah. is yes. or what it does. Can you just like briefly just say like what cost cap is and um even, even is, person, well, yeah. well uh, Nigel is a, is a current current uh, <laughs> current director. Yeah. Um, the corporate society for composers, authors and publishers. Mm -hmm. Right? That's the corporate agency that looks after the interests of Barbadian music. And we also have members from overseas as well. And so when songs get played on the radio, you get paid royalty, you will get it royalties are paid into cost cap. And cost cap then distributes that money to its members. Mm -hmm. right. It's really a, a collection agency. Yeah. So when you play foreign music, you can't say that you So this is why I'm saying that yeah. it's very important that the, the balance of music played should be in our favor so that more music stays in, in the world with this, then we can produce more music with the money that we are getting. Yep. Right? Because if we are not in, uh, if we don't have the financial muscle to produce music, then you will realize that less music will be produced. Yep. Right? And, and and then it affects crop over, then it affects the people who sell and then it, and there's, there's a trickle effect. But a dumb effect and, and, and we have to take it seriously. No, no, I can be a bit controversial because I, I, I hear the point you make and I totally agree. But I also notice that there is no lack of regional rotation on many stations. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean regional and the regional rotation is not necessarily current songs from the region, it could be a few years back. But even in that rotation, you don't get a lot of the local music, whether current or you get, sometimes you get kind of tidbits of local music mixed into this heavy regional local rotation. So is there something wrong with the appeal of Barbadian music outside of the season? Um, is there a challenge with supply of the music outside of the season? What is it? Because any given day, I know I could put on my radio and I hear a few Masha Montana songs, for example. Mm -hmm. I can't necessarily swear that any given day that you will hear one of your songs yep. or even um, Paul Gilbert and these days, you may not hear that every day. So what exactly what is really causing 
the issue behind the airtime given to local players. Why are we opposed? Uh, all of our radio stations are locally owned, to my knowledge. None of them are owned by foreign entities or foreign individuals. Mm -hmm. So well, why can't we accept a 50 50 rotation on our own initiative, even without a law or rule or anything to promote our own? I don't know where to start. The basic problem is that our music mm -hmm. needs to be institutionalized and it has to be. Mm -hmm. It has to be a part of the system mm -hmm. at every level, right? Which means then that hotels should employ local. They can't go to hotel and you can hear by saying, mm -hmm. or Gabby saying, or Alison saying. Mm -hmm. And that is the place where we get these much vulnerable businesses that come and bring all this, you know, blessed foreign exchange. Mm -hmm. But they can't hear all artists, right? I started up by referring to the thing when they said we had an industry. Mm -hmm. And a key element of that was the fact that whenever you had the 10 facts for the sound, mm -hmm. with all day by the 10 day, that was because people were hearing the music all day long. Yeah. People were hearing the music. New songs were coming up, hey, we're hearing them. We're hearing songs from the last week, we new, songs, new songs from this week. So therefore, there was an appeal. Yes. We do not have that anymore, right? The whole question of quotas, we have a 60% regional quota already. Mm -hmm. But that, of course, is cleverly manipulated, right? To the point where, as everybody was saying, you will hear Buju, you will hear Ma Michelle, you will hear Movado and Babes Cartel, and Infinito, but it was very seldom here a Barbie in tune. Mm -hmm. What needs to be done, and it is not rocket science, as Bible explained, the economics make sense, mm -hmm. right? Play the local music, the fellas get more, get more royalties, they can produce more music, music will be on the market, and a key part of that strategy, to my mind, is a dedicated station for Barbie music. Mm -hmm. I don't understand what the problem is with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I even sang a little some years ago, but mm -hmm. I, I don't, it's not a, a secret, it's nothing. I think I can say in public that I had a meeting with the Prime Minister in 2011 on the whole question of having a Barbie station. Yeah. He agreed with me, myself and a few other people. He agreed with what we were saying. He asked for information. He gave us all the information he wanted and more. We even pointed out to him the political benefit mm -hmm. of being the person to be able to say, listen, after all these years of people calling for a beta station, I am the person I gave you a beta station. Even that didn't seem to persuade him. I don't mm -hmm. understand what the problem is. I just want to ask him what the problem is in terms of the DJs and not playing music. Mm -hmm. It is a question of one case I think of ignorance, although, although I don't know how that can really be tenable now given the kind of work that Crosscap is doing. Because as a member of Crosscap, I've gone to radio stations, sat down with talking with managers, right? And explained to them what the whole thing was all about. The way they have a, a key part to play in what is basically wealth creation and progress. Mm -hmm. You know? I would like everybody to be able to have a house that they would have a green. <laughs> This is actually leading to one of the things that Adrian Green would have discussed with me because he would have made a post about the fact that a lot of the advice is only taken seriously when it comes from an economist or a successful business person. Mm. So do you think that part of the reason why some of the suggestions that are given by persons within the industry aren't taken seriously is just because you're not an economist, you're not a business person, you're seen as some person who engaging in a hobby? Is that one of the things that you find might be a reason why you're not taken seriously? And before you answer, just before mm -hmm. that, I'll sing about it. Yeah. If you want social commentary, we get it from you. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't understand why no one has ever asked you, how do we move it forward? Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, you know, but he said, I, we did have the, the meeting. Mm -hmm. with, and we met the Prime Minister in his capacity as the person in charge of his information, but the person yeah. in charge of CBC. Yeah. And have one station because they said it's not all about music. Mm -hmm. You can have drama, yeah. you have poetry, you have other aspects of the art. Right? People have so to be able to come to a country mm -hmm. and experience the soul and the spirit of that country. Mm -hmm. If people come here and turn on the radio, it could well be in Jamaica or Trinidad. And the thing is, when you go to other countries, you hear their music. Mm -hmm. It's not to say that you're going to go to Jamaica and hear a heavy rotation 
of any other music other than Jamaican music. So I don't have to make one point here quickly. So mm-hmm. this is really actually a regional problem. Yeah. We know in Jamaica, one mm-hmm. would think that you would, in Jamaica you'd be not down with Jamaica. But Jamaica has something like thirty percent, no twenty percent okay. of their royalties remain in Jamaica. Wow. Eighty percent of their royalties go overseas. And regionally it's about thirty percent. Okay. Barbados is about thirty ish. Right? That is the percentage of royalties that remain in the country, the rest of wow. overseas. Just, just let me give you some idea as to how our music is viewed. Mm-hmm. When we had an opportunity, we had two major opportunities. Um, we had one in 2007 when we had World Cup Cricket. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I think in 2010 when we had the 2020 um, World Cup. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine we we, we are exposed to the world, to put our music to the world. Yes. And rather than playing our music to the world, we heard, and I'm not saying we should play original music, mm-hmm. but strangely enough, when the cricket went to those other territories, territories they played their music. Yeah. And yeah. we played mm-hmm. less of our music than other territories. I mean, and it is an opportunity to showcase our yeah, talent. Exactly. Right, so I'm saying that we, we tend to miss the boat as it relates to the hotel that you um, play in the hotels. If I had anything to do with the um, the concessions that I give it to hotels, mm-hmm. I would link it to to, to to entertainment. You know, okay, fine, we can give you concessions, mm-hmm. but under the conditions, they will come with a caveat, under the conditions that you, you employ local entertainment. Yeah. Right? I so, uh, yeah, and, and <laughs> exactly. And maybe that's where we, where we are um, slipping up as well. I think it is time that we have a union, you know, that can lobby government in, in a serious way. When I have to get a work permit to perform in the United States, mm-hmm. it has to be sanctioned by the, U- the Musicians Union in the United States. Okay. I'm saying that if we have a union here, when entertainment is coming in, we should have to sanction it as well. Yep. Right? We need to get serious about it. You see, this question of concessions that we're really interested for the border fight, because that's something I was thinking as well. I think that we should be given initiatives, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry, initiatives, like incentives to hotels. To hire local entertainers. But having said that, I wouldn't call in the name of the hotel. But I know that within a very recent time, one hotel to which major concessions have been granted was approached about <coughs> employing more local entertainment. Yes. And the response was negative. Wow. So I can understand that I give you A, B, C, W, Z to come to the island. And then I tell you, okay, we don't have more local people on the stage. And you're not in favor of it. So that makes me a little nervous about suggesting the rest of the incentives, but mm-hmm. perhaps that might be a way to go, to give them some kind of tax incentive or something. But, but I also note that one of these hotels that had all of these incentives recently hired a local entertainer mm-hmm. as part of their entertainment management team. Mm-hmm. Now, are we then to accept that this local entertainer in that position will not invite more of you on the property to perform. I would think so. But, uh, I thought I was hearing that that, that would know more well. But, um, <laughs> <Yeah. okay>. but, <laughs> but um, maybe I'm here here wrong, right? Um, I would think that if if um, if that's the case, maybe you should see more local in, in, entertainment. But this is not that there's not entertainment. No, I own it. In the hotels, you know. Yeah. Yeah. it is at the level that they're, they're functioning. They, they don't really don't want to pay Correct. for the entertainment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, um, in any significant way, so that, yeah. that's really easy. What people seem to be failing to understand, you don't understand how it's going to be done. I know who is an expert and they can see it very clearly. People want to take like, an experience, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. an experience that is unique. Mm-hmm. Now, what better way than to have in direct interaction with the people who are really the soul of the country, the yeah. people who speak for the country? Yeah. Not the politicians that is changed every five years. Right? But the ones who are actually speaking from the heart of the country, there must be that interaction. We have a question coming yeah. in from... Well, one comment, we have a comment mm-hmm. here that says, it comes down to a lack of confidence in ourselves. True. Uh, yeah, but this, True. Is why I said, this is why I said earlier, that if we don't like ourselves, who can, who can, who can we expect other people to like us or to, or, to, or to appreciate us? We need to appreciate ourselves first and to feel good about ourselves. I, 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 I'm hoping that celebrating 50 years of independence um, would bring about that sense of, of um, patriotism, a sense of feeling good about being Barbadian, mm. you know, 
and I hope they can be down to to a, a more positive outlook on ourselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, yeah. the other questions here is about the music being available on iTunes and Google Music yes. and Spotify. I mean, personally, I use iTunes a lot, and yeah. I can say there has been a significant increase in availability of our main right. music on iTunes. But as practitioners, maybe you can share with us a bit of the process, what the challenge may be, yeah. um, as we get into talking more about how you actually survive in there. Yeah. Uh, well, in our case, it's yeah, yeah, right, I, and the lesser extent, in terms of being full time entertainers, yeah. how do you keep it going? How do you survive? I, I think that um, a lot of people, um, there's a, a myth that there's a lot of money to be made off iTunes. Mm -hmm. um, the amount of hits you have, you have the amount of um, um, things you download, you have mm -hmm. to get. Um, to really make anything significant is, is, is a great amount, okay. right? It is difficult for, um, it is, cause most, and more often than not, you are selling to the diaspora. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we need to do in the Caribbean in order to make our music um, more visible to the public that be in music, mm -hmm. like say, for example, say people involved in the Grammys, I, I believe that we need a, a a music awards here in the Caribbean that is a music awards here in the Caribbean that is aff affiliated um, with the, the, the Grammys, mm -hmm. right? And invite them in. I mean, I'm not talking about the music in the Caribbean, I'm talking about the Caribbean. even the French Caribbean, mm -hmm. yeah. the inter Caribbean. We've had award ceremonies, but the award ceremonies are, are you know, in one Love, direction, yeah. the, either for reggae or for soccer music. Yeah. We need a real music, um, music awards. Um, bring the powers that be in, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and let them see what we are all about. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have to get a more structured approach to promoting our music. Okay. I think that if we do it in a good way, and in a strong way, the hotel will be able to endorse. Okay, what right. happened? There was, there was a follow up question um, to what mm -hmm. um, David had mentioned because the gentleman, Terence, was saying that patronage is a problem with local music. And then he also had a follow-up. Uh, he said, what about the big music elephant in the room, a.k.a. Rihanna? I don't know why you referred to Rihanna. I, 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 I wasn't sure. I don't know, I didn't know either. I didn't understand it. Mm. Uh, this is what about Rihanna. I didn't really understand it. I thought you would. I mean, Rihanna has done well for our business, but I think I the formula behind Rihanna, I think, it's, it's not, not the formula that mm -hmm. our average entertainer will have exposure to. Um, but when you, 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 you said Rihanna has done well for Barbados, you mean in terms of our music? In terms of exposing Barbados, oh, not necessarily right. exposing the entertainment industry or our music, because Rihanna's music is not necessarily Barbadian music. She mm -hmm. represents Barbados as an entertainer born in Barbados and so on, and we are proud of that. But talk to us a little bit like about survival, because I think um, you are one of the few full time entertainers. Have you seen, have you not seen that long right here? <laughs> supporting yourself, supporting yourself and of course your family and I know um, even last year in my own business travel mm -hmm. I encountered you in Miami airport and on a flight to Miami yeah. back and forth, not necessarily you were going to Miami but you were definitely traveling to perform so right. tell us a bit about how you survive, how you get the bookings, how difficult it is, how hard it is um, and then the monetary side, not to say how much you earn, but how easy is it to survive as a full-time entertainer in Barbados? It's not easy. Uh, for sure, you, you can't survive on Cockle alone. Correct. Uh, you have to get gigs outside of Barbados. And getting gigs outside of Barbados, that it itself is beginning to dwindle. Because most of our performances are uh, from the Tendi Caribbean diaspora. And, hmm. and uh, cause we have not been able to, to penetrate beyond um, um, the diaspora. Is so, there a reason for that? I, 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 I think um, there's a, a major reason for that, and mm -hmm. I've been saying that for some time now. I think that most of, most of the music that's produced in Barbados, which is soca music, mm -hmm. is driven by the festival. Yes. Our music has, it has to be everywhere around. Yes. The music has to drive the festival, mm -hmm. so that the topics are broader. Our topic, we sing songs that are really about jam and wine and joke yes. because that's what the festival is all about. I mean, can you imagine a man in Minnesota driving in the winter, you take to jump up and raise your hand and <laughs> you, you see what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So we need to be serious about the topics that we choose. Yes. And and um, you know, and how we present them. Yes. Right? So the, the, the reality is that our music 
is still primarily uh, impactful in, within our own lives. Mm -hmm. We have not been able to produce those songs that would penetrate. Mm -hmm. People saw it, see uh, people have um, mentioned that to them it's just our music. Yeah, actually. Right. Yeah. So we need to make our music that it can it can be played all year. So one of the suggestions is maybe because you had a little bit of that even with yourself where you had some soul music for christmas because right. i myself the reason i hate christmas music is because it's the same thing all the time and you had a few soca songs in barbados that focused on christmas mm -hmm. you have Maisie is not what you see i ain't gonna sing because i sound awful but and then i embarrass myself in front of people who can actually sing but there are other times in the year where you can focus the soca music on. You have Valentine's, you have... I mean, people who sing other genres don't think about summertime when they're singing. Yeah, but you so, see, you see the thing, uh, Crystal, is this? How difficult would that be? Uh, I, I think that a lot of the indigenous are a bit skeptical and just curious mm -hmm. to produce music out of season simply because of the, the, the view. Mm -hmm. of, that is uh, only for the season? Uh, yeah. The, 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 uh, the DJs, a lot of the DJs probably wouldn't zero in on it. There's a mm -hmm. lot of excitement created around the mm -hmm, Probably, one. yes. Right? Um, a fella makes a song for Valentine. Um, it tends not to, it will probably tend not to to go much farther than, than, than Valentine. Probably I'm going to have to wait until the next year to... Um, to, to Romantic to, music plays all the time, yeah. R&B and... See, but there's another side to this, mm -hmm. Most of the people who are involved in music in Barbados, mm -hmm. they have a name of fame. It is so don't true. really take music <laughs> that seriously. seriously. Because it's, it's a chicken and egg situation. Mm -hmm. Can I give up my 9 to 5 to get into an industry that doesn't pay me that well and then I can't eat when I have a 9 to 5 that feeds me and helps me to at least be able to dabble my foot inside of the entertainment I, industry. I understand all that. I yeah. understand all that. And there's also the fact that when a fellow makes a song in Corcova, in most, in most cases, he just want a popular song. And he want a quick win. He want yeah, a saying, you know, um, Arrow once said to me that, you know, a lot of the artists, they, rather than claiming a lot of success, mm -hmm. they prefer to use the elevator. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, so I mean, they, they, they want a quick fix. They want to get a, a song that's popular and really they're popular for six weeks. And yes. then they try to make a song for next year. And a lot of fellas don't really take it seriously. And, mm -hmm. and, um, and that's, that's one problem we have. See, one of the problems with the whole Krakowa driven aspect of the music, right, is that it, has, it seems to have lulled all artists into believing that we are a festival people. Mm -hmm. You know? Interesting. And <laughs> if you are, if, if we are festival people, mm -hmm. we will act a certain way mm -hmm. because we live for the festival and the yep. festival alone. Mm -hmm. This is why I trained last year to do. Done different things. Right. Right? I can have reggae song and I can have rock song. Right? Because the music that goes on all year long. Correct. You know, all over the world. And they think that is one of the main problems. So if I would say, well, listen, and it can't be in the way. If we drop this song though in March, what are you going to get there? Yeah. Right? But if I wait and they drop a bash my song in July, I know they get played. Because there's a certain energy already. Exactly. I know, but... See, and that, and that the reason why the need for a dedicated station is so great. Yeah. yeah. Because you can then have these songs... That, and people make the mistake of saying, thinking that when you say basic music, you think it's collection and so forth. No, they're not. But no, there's a I lot... There's so, so much music more music played in November. There is no, so no, much, lot well, there's there's so much alternative music. Yeah, there's so yeah. much alternative yeah. music. There's so much music being made of in Barbados. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people have alternative music. That is not so far for it, sir. That is the we sad part. We need to get played, you see. And the more thing is that if you have a dedicated station, fellas can also say, okay, but you only have some place I like to get back to. And then you create, and the more the great, the big, the bad, the double of local music, the better for everybody. And you create it with the great people that you've made against the world. I really understand. What is so hard to see about that, and who can lose? That like that. that is tends to be the frustrating thing because you do identify the problem. Mm -hmm. We you've gone so, a lot further than I thought. Persons have gone to going to the prime minister and 
having this discussion and having his buy-in, yet we still don't have these things in place. And you've identified something very important because everybody's talking about the economy and the fact that foreign exchange is something that is critical at this point in time. Yet you have an industry that is leaking foreign exchange and you have solutions to make sure that you keep it in the country and these solutions are not being taken seriously. And it's just that what's worse than that is that ever so often we hear some person like an official get up and say, you know the culture industry is actually way to go. You know? <laughs> that's the way to go to what's gonna really drive the economy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But instead of putting in place the things that can make the thing work, yeah. they'll just stop. So you mentioned the term cultural industries, which mm -hmm. brings me to the cultural industries building, cultural industry development app and all these things, cultural industry development fund. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talk to me. Useful, not useful, something well, the containers are likely it, to it, use. It is right thinking. Um, it's right thinking in terms of having a having the infrastructure in place to support the, the, the creative industries, to support the, the, mm -hmm. the, the cultural industries. Um, the funding of it is another story. Um, uh, a lot of people can benefit, I, I would think. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it is okay to get support to create a song or create something or the other. Mm -hmm. It is how you're going to move it from that point right. to the next level. You need financial muscle for that as well, right? Mm -hmm. So, the support has to be beyond that, in my opinion. It has to be beyond just the little trickle that you get at a certain level, yeah. right? Um, super so somebody level. made a comment about heavy private sector investment has happened in Jamaica in the music industry. Right, that's what happened. But, um, but I don't know how much that happens here in Barbados. Right. Although, the private sector benefits significantly from Kwahoba, especially, yeah. you know, they're able to benefit significantly mm -hmm. from Kwahoba, and I believe that it's only fair that they, 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 um, they put something back in there to, to, um, to but I'm them. almost left to think oh, that there's something wrong with our really hindrances to the private sector investing, DJs don't want this, some of the music has been retained as much as we would like, um, not getting into the hotel circuit and tourist industry where we can have easy exposure to tourists. What is creating these hindrances? Is it just a mindset? It's, probably, it's, 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 a, it's a mindset. It's a mindset, and, and, and to a large extent, of fear. I I, th I think a, a lot of radio stations are afraid that they can lose um, advertising. Um, but you have to start somewhere. If if you if you feed people something, they can they will grow to like it. They will grow to get accustomed to it. Yeah. Um, but if you don't start, I mean. How are they going to get us in there? How are they, how, how, how they going to become part of their debt? That is why, that is how easily that sort of has become almost the national music of our business. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is why. Look, 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 look at Reggae Song. Puerto Rico stipulated that 80% of that has to be paid. 80 percent wow. And the solution, right? And all these things is not difficult. And it catches on. Yeah. The solution is not difficult. It's simply legislate. Right? Mm -hmm. The legislate this thing. You are part of any radio station. If you want to get a license, you understand? You have to pay 60% while being in the Full stop. And it can be monitored. These yeah. days, full stop. These days it, can, it can be monitored because, mm -hmm. I mean, you can have, um, you, what you play on the radio can have a footprint, so to speak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and it can be digitally monitored mm -hmm. and, 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 and shown um, your exact fee if, if you if you met the quota. Mm -hmm. It's not a technical thing to do. Sorry, it's mm -hmm. an absence I think, of the political will to do it. The reason behind that I can understand, right? Mm -hmm. Because I have been, I have been in parties that have met at radio stations, and <laughs> senior people at the radio stations have told us frankly, "Well, you know, these fellows ain't getting paid because they're unless they're That is right? sad. Yeah, you have to let us But what does it say about our culture if you have to legislate for our babies? I have interest in being Barbadian. I've heard with my own ears a promo for one of the DJs in Barbadian that did not have in one single Barbadian tune. <laughs> it has six Trinidadian in tunes. I'm not saying that we should play Trinidadian music, but I'm saying that that wouldn't happen in Trinidad. No, for sure. Because Trinidadians feel better about themselves than that. 
Somebody may be funny for me. Can I find your comment though? Somebody was referring to DJ Puffy's. Um, oh, yes. The fact that he, he won the Red Bull contest. Rebel. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, in all local music. Yeah. And suggested Most that patronage of local music is really at the heart of the problem. And that people were demanding the local music more. Mm-hmm. But then DJs would be kind of locked into a corner to play more of the local music. Yeah. And it's then it would start. Because it's a vicious circle. We can't be reminded if we're going to hear it. There you go. Yeah. Only, only yeah. recently. Yeah. Um, Tom Hines, and I, 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 I applaud him for that. Um, but it's, it's music festival that he, he had recently. He took the chance to have soca, soca music mm-hmm. to finish that festival. And it, it, it led by Nicholas Franklin. Yeah, led by Nicholas Franklin. And it got tremendous response. Right? We just needed to continue to, to, to promote what we have. I had a comment because you made a comment um, about the private sector investment and then you know the crop over festival and people get the benefits so they don't put it back. I can relate to that from a different sector, right? Involving what my pet peeve is sports tourism mm-hmm. and um, involve a little bit in the hockey festival. Every year when the turf is on, you do your hockey festival, 500 people come in. You use the metric of 176 US dollars a day per person, 500 mm-hmm. people here for a week. The math man gets you up in one and a half, two million dollars. We're a volunteer organization. We spend a year organizing it, bringing all these people in. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the, at the end of the festival, we got 40 or 60 thousand dollars to run the festival. And then people telling you, I mean, run the hockey for the year. And then people telling you, oh, you should, you should put down the, the three quarter million dollar turf. <laughs> the point is, we don't, we as in the hockey festival, mm-hmm. don't make any money. Right. The money comes in. I had this discussion with Gilbert Rowe when, he, um, when, I, when I was trying my best to teach John Ray how to play cricket when he had a celebrity match <laughs> and that didn't work so well. So we were sitting down the Sunday after and I asked Gilbert, I said, when you did your jazz festival, how many people, whether it be a hotelier, a catamaran, a jet ski operator, somebody from Oystings, souvenir, duty free shop in town, send you a thank you card? Tell me not one. And the same thing. When we used to go to try to get the same people who benefit to, to even put like a little ad in the, the magazine, but their hotel full with That's 30, 40 thing. guests. And we can't get ad. It's like pulling teeth trying to get ad from there. And I learned already that we have this thing all wrong. Because, so I spoke, so when they're coming in, I asked, well, well if you register that, you come in for here. And you percentage out of that and say, all right, we can allocate that to that. But I say it can't work because the bureaucracy can't work. Mm-hmm. So how, so then the question is, you're making all of this money off of, I can say hockey, mm-hmm. you can say music. How do we, or like even say the Kenston Oval, the Kenston Oval is struggling to get funds or whatever, but I got 10,000 tourists in there that's mm-hmm. spending for the whole week. Can't send any none of that money, but nobody coming for it. How do we change that mindset? Because when you don't have crop over or any other festival, or you don't have the hockey festival, or you don't have cricket at the stadium, is nobody ain't coming. Exactly. So it's it's like it's not chicken or the egg. The egg first, and there's the egg. Mm-hmm. So how do you how do you think? Because I'm interested from the hockey side. Uh, how do you think we can change this mindset and say, look, if you don't support it, it's not going to happen? Well, it's, it's going to be difficult to, to, um, to, to, to change. Um, most people are more about the intake, more about income than anything else. And they, they, it, it's about all what they can get for themselves. Um, but I think that we need to be more vocal about it. We need to go there and say, listen, you know, you, you're getting this and you're getting the next and you're getting the third, you know, what exactly are you putting up here? You know, from our side, the National Culture Foundation, um, I, I must um, say that they do a great job with the, what they're given to mm-hmm. the thing. But they're given, they're put in a position where they have to make money. From the, from the, they've become the promoters. Imagine the people, the people who are supposed to be more promoting our culture yeah. and, 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 and supporting our culture. They're put in a position where they, but they, they must make money at the end of the day. Yeah. So in truth and fact, how can you fully 
give support. Yes. If you if you 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 have to make money. You, you see what I'm saying? Focus has changed. Right. Mm -hmm. You think it is all about money. Right? Because you can't have an agency whose mandate is to basically have to develop and promote culture yeah. in the country. Yeah. And tell them, okay, I give you X amount of money if you want this, which is woefully inadequate, mm -hmm. go and get somebody more to pay. And the benefit is coming back to the whole country. Right? So and if I can make the point of all the, the money thing. Mm -hmm. Every year we hear you figure, last time I heard it was 80 million. 80 million US. 80 million US that is supposed to come into the country. Everybody else. You understand? Yeah. I tell these fellas to the front ever since, listen, we're going to get serious. Mm -hmm. right? If you can tell me that 80 million US comes into the country, or let me say even 80 million Asian comes into the country as a result of our program, mm -hmm. and we are the people that are the engine of this thing. Yeah. Yeah. All we have to do is just give up. We want a million dollars mm -hmm. for this festival to be divided among the people who put it on, Correct. who actually out there doing the work. What can they have an issue? It's as simple as So hold the 80 million to ransom. Right? No. But they don't even want to call the word ransom. Call ransom gives the impression that it gives you a subject on free. You are fine. You are nothing for you pay for what you pay for. But let us be the first ones to get the benefit. But then, should this discussion. Not because we, we keep looking at government, public sector, mm -hmm. but the, the government theoretically is not the one making that 80 million either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so, the, so the, the discussion, in my opinion, because mm -hmm. I, I used to I wear my mm -hmm. field hockey sports tourism hat, <laughs> yeah. the discussion we should be having is, is my opinion, you tell me, is with the Chamber of Commerce mm -hmm. and the BHDA. Mm -hmm. And any other private entity, small business association, the intimate hotels of Barbados. Mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. certainly um, during those season, mm -hmm. small big hotels, everybody is full, is, is full mm -hmm. number of mm -hmm. But there's nothing to be cycling. You don't know about hotels, but you know there's several big private sectors and some smaller ones who actively sponsor crop all the events through the efforts of the NCA. Mm -hmm. Could it be more widespread? Yes, because honestly, without their support, a lot of events will crop over that probably would not come up mm -hmm. on, the, on the budget that the yep. NCF has. Mm -hmm. So it is a matter of getting more investment and that the investment is enough to be spread across all of the cultural activities, crop over, lift go. We have to look at things in terms of culinary arts and yep. craft and photography and everything. And that's um, the whole gamut of culture. Well, I, I said, why well, I said that the, the, the yes, yeah. The, the magician is ready to be able to yeah. to, 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 to juggle the, the, um, the money. But I, I agree with you. You probably need to to look at. Um, well, I remember we had a, a, a discussion about that a couple of years ago. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So you, right? so you agree that a yeah. step should yes. be made to them? Yeah, definitely. And definitely. remember what our mantra is here. Mm. Yeah. Since it's about the, no, no, it's, it's about the solution. Yeah. Yeah. So who do the entertainers need help from? Because you made the, the, the point earlier that they all need to come together. Yeah. Well, that, 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 that is one. Yeah. But more do you need it. assistance from to help you make that a reality and maybe mm. provide that advice, guide, whatever is necessary? I don't think that entertainers need any body apart from themselves. We can go right? there. And yeah. their own good. Right? So we had it. I was present at United Arts and Marketers. We had a union which did some good work in the short and this is what we said function. We met with um, national insurance people. We got a lot of editors that weren't registered for national insurance to go over and stuff. Right? We had some health seminars and so right? We met with the BHDA with a view to improving the facilities for editors and so on. But like more since back then that of a short leg. But the only thing that is stopping the entertainers from doing it is the mm -hmm. No, I agree now, but I think there's there's room for some other support, and it's both public and private, because I've waited for years the fact that I'm by could probably bear me up on this, but you win a Calypso crown, for example, during Crop Over, and you get to perform at several events during Crop Over, and chances are the next time you get to hear you perform in the competition the following year. Yeah. You're not the face of a beat. Yeah. Or in our case of BT, I might add on the face of any festival being brought from our and we're promoted. Mm -hmm. um, so again, there is that room for support that is missing so that mm -hmm. 
as Dai started by saying, we're missing a lot of the easy, simple opportunities to promote the culture. Um, and sometimes, for example, the, the ad that you do for Caribbean LED, for example, mm. that's the type of thing I'm talking about. We're not right. excited for commercial game, but there are lots of ads to promote for that we Correct. should be using entertainers for. We yes. should be encouraging yeah. other companies to use our local entertainment for the jingles and so on as well. Yeah. But to me, those are so many low hanging fruits, so to speak, that we're missing repeatedly. Yeah. Talk about low hanging fruits that we're missing. Not a couple. Uh, a Kaboga festival. We have you know, the Tenor Kaboga festival. We have the um, we have the folk event. We have mm -hmm. different art shows. We have mm -hmm. after art events and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, but these are held early in the festival. In the festival, mm -hmm. when people are not here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You, you read it, that? Mm -hmm. So we really need to. Some people come in for the last leg of crop over. I can't see it. Crop over reading and everything. Crop over reading. I, I can't see it. You see what I'm saying? It's all the way. Yeah, it's all the way. We can't say we didn't do it. Right, you don't do good. Burning is the hard one. One of the things that we consider unique to the market. The crop over. We're done with that. We need to look at the things that would make crop over unique. Mm -hmm. So, the step so it does not become like everybody else's. We are moving. We have reached a point where we just become another character. If you had to blindfold someone, you tell the if you had to blindfold someone right now and then let them go in the middle of a battle on the road, they could be in Saint Lucia, they could be in Trinidad, they could be in New York, they could be in Miami. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. What makes Bobby this? Festival unique. Interesting. So, yeah. so, is there a misunderstanding of the concept of culture? You know? I think the value of it. I, I, I think to a large extent we don't have a we need a national focus on culture. Who would spearhead something like that? Well, I, I think that it has to come out of the ministry. To, um, it has to, it has to come out of the ministry um, in terms of a, 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 a plan and a, and a drive. I mean, the whole thing with the cultural industry bill is a start mm -hmm. that forms an infrastructure. But more has to be done. More has to be done in terms of get. Um, look, look, crop over. It's only the last week. This is only the last week when people get involved in crop over. There are only about 4,000 people who go around the all crop over events in Marvellous. Yeah, because it's difficult and it's difficult. There are only about 4,000 people who go around all events. Yeah. 4,000. And a big part of that is that we mentioned that some events being early, mm -hmm. but the hype around the crop over reading or around any other of those early events compared to the hype of Young Soka Royale and so on. The last leg. The last leg. I mean, we, I think we all know any type of event, the more hype you hear around it, the more you feel you need to be a part of it. Yes. And I don't know if somebody lack of hype with some events is lack of sponsorship for those events, so you can't do a lot of promotion. Um, but it's something we need to address because, I mean, Jamaicans take their culture seriously and push it as much as they can. I mean, I've gone to a couple of conferences in Jamaica and they don't let the conference pass. They help you, they help make sure you experience the culture mm -hmm. in terms of the cuisine, the, the entertainment, the, 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 mm -hmm. the displays of craft, and, and, and other hand, you work the same thing in front of that. Um, are we doing the same thing to the same extent? Uh, who are the people at the forefront who should really be guiders? And I think we've identified some of them apart from the ministry, the BHD, and some of these other agencies, the hotels who are interacting with the visitors and, and the large groups who some of us may not even are coming in for meetings and other retreats. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure that people of our best understand the value of our culture yeah. and what it means. So um, it's what it means who we are we culturally, are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's really who we are. Yeah. I find it strange that you will go to a hotel and you're not hearing soca music. Yeah. But for the time you come into it, you're in a Bajan hotel. Yeah. You should be hearing Bajan music, whether it's Calypso, Spooge, even non soca music, there's lots of Barbadian entertainers and that... support for the entertainers because they have to pay cost gap fees for the public. There you go. And, and if you have a tourist having seven days, say they stay five, seven days, and all they're hearing is Beijing music, Beijing music, it's going to stick with them and they go back home and look for it. There's a major misconception, in my opinion, that um, tourists come here because they want to get the whole Barbadian feel. At least the people I know who have come down. And I think there's a misconception that, you know, you will go to a hotel bar and you don't always hear the local music, hear it all yeah. intertwined. Mm -hmm. 
So people want to know what is Deja music, what, you know, so sometimes people want to know what is Deja music. So how, how do we change our psyche? Yeah. <coughs> well, before that, how do we say change it? I think that's a manifestation of We seem to, we seem to be thinking of our biggest that the tourists kind of fight into me. <laughs> right? I mean, the Navy, right? Seriously, people are promoted right? by hotels? And, no, 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 And it is so much effort made to keep away, right? Visitors from what official seems to regard as a threat. Look at the vendors, for example, mm -hmm. and the whole experience of vendors in mm -hmm. Any part of the world you go, right? Vendors are one of the biggest attractions yep. to visitors. Yep. Right? But yeah, we cleaned us up. We cleaned our soul to the city. The Colombia, right? And being astounded at the variety mm -hmm. of vendors that they had there. You don't have friends that, that were sending us a hat and were sending us a videos that I'm like, mm -hmm. it's the whole whole to put together. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but it had this thing that all from the teeth, right? Mm -hmm. That is the experience of the law. Who do we treat like this here? Second right? class citizens. Every five minutes, somebody run them off the bridge mm -hmm. or run them on this place. And we don't give them, but if we give them some place, we put it all in our so Far, we yeah. We ain't nobody going to come yeah. in contact with them. These are the kind of experiences. Yeah. Right? When they go to any country, the first thing they do mm -hmm. when they get a chance is to go to the market. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yep. Go to the rest of the market. Before you go to that day, you can find real people. Right? And I can come away with a real experience at that place. Yeah. And it's like not what the, the hotel standard should be, or not what the tourist, tourism ministry says they should do, but the, the people talking. We need to understand that people are afraid to flee, right? And to encourage that kind of intimate interaction between people. And not to get stuck in the shitty world and give them a little kind of plastic version of what my baby says. Sorry, sorry, right? <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> No pun intended. It's not changing enough. <laughs> a lot of people come to Barbados and they could take them to an ordinary rock shop. Mm -hmm. They love it. And that, they that, love that it. becomes the high the, the, the point. You take them to the shop, I, I, they, I, they, I, they, they, get, they get a cheese cut or again mm -hmm. of um, bread and fish. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. I'm beginning to think that rum shops are one of the few places that actually try to keep the Asian culture mm -hmm. intact. Because mm -hmm. there are a lot of the bars that I would go to, Pam Bar, Pam Grill and Bar, Monster Bar, you hear only soca music and a little bit of anything else. It's at any time of the year, you can hear a heavy rotation of soca music. And they have, as you said, the pickle, the bread and two, they have traditional Bajan foods there. They're not afraid to give Bajan culture, and of course you run. There's a heavy, heavy availability of local cuisine, local entertainment. Why is it that the bars have picked this up and they're successful? As you said, you take a tourist there, they have a ball, mm -hmm. house bar in the gap. Yeah. They have a fantastic attendance. Yeah. They're not afraid to showcase our culture. They're successful. Why is it so hard to translate this then to anywhere else? Mm -hmm. How are they able to make the formula work for them, but no one else can? But maybe people are involved. That's a good question. <laughs> yeah, they really yeah. understand how the thing works. Yeah. Is it perhaps some, some things that the officials that come out of their office, you know, and go and talk to these people and go, oh, the actual yeah. interaction really does work. Because you know? we need to make sure that we don't lose our culture. And this is, I was just on a show with Adrian Green and Bajan Farai, and we came to the, con the same conclusion we're coming to here on a comp another topic that it boils down to the will of the people. How do we then energize people to want to have Bajan culture, Bajan music, Bajan everything back into the society? People need to take back the power and stop waiting on the powers that be to do everything. That, that, that we have people commenting mm -hmm. saying we need to do a part two to this problem. That would be very informative and very interesting. Mm -hmm. And somebody suggesting next time we need to include a few private event promoters to get a wider view of the discussion of yeah. the entertainment industry. Um, Could we go back to the very first thing here this time? Very exciting yeah, first time. Oh, people here are say, saying that it's very interesting. Not before that. What did they say before that? Uh, oh, that was very quickly. 
Oh, I think. Oh, I think I was saying that the people, we the people, need to take yeah. back the power oh, rather right. than waiting on the power yes. to be. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and I think, and that's been a, a thing. I mean, that's how some. Of it's not just the entertainment industry. It feels as though it's um, in every industry we yeah, talk and, and about. I don't think we need to wait for the US and have Trump come and say we are giving power back to the people. The people need to know that they are the power behind the country. We are the majority. The powers mm-hmm. that we are the minority. Mm-hmm. So, so that's we, we are the ones that. We cover right. this topic because mm-hmm. people ask us, what are you guys saying? But we don't have to go and look for it because it's already there. It's already there. Mm-hmm. It's already there. Mm-hmm. Is it even in the music industry if that point you made about taking back the power? Mm-hmm. I, I know right now there are some musicians who are playing in shops mm-hmm. right? and small bars. Mm-hmm. I think for the days of a, a musician, those musicians being able to afford to two gigs a night, yeah. mm-hmm. two gigs a week in the gap, yeah. and two gigs yeah. and mm-hmm. the yeah. of those days. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think the fellows now have got to realize that we are the show, mm-hmm. right? and we have got to create things around create ourselves. The buzz. Right? As you say, not with anybody's going to say, okay, I got a big gig for you up there. Yeah, because. Really but it can happen. Can guarantee that any entertainer yourselves, including say, look, I gonna be at John Moore Bar tomorrow night mm-hmm. starting at 8 o'clock mm-hmm. and send out a WhatsApp, send out a little Facebook mm-hmm. post, whatever. Mm-hmm. People will come, especially mm-hmm. if it's a popular place, to hear the entertainment, mm-hmm. buy some drinks, buy some food, mm-hmm. right? Very but good. a little talk and might even contribute mm-hmm. to the cause for the entertainer themselves too. But to, and and the, what that do that takes the music back to the people, to the communities, yeah. and away the from the radio station. Because the I've often lamented and I've played the local music as well, more often than not, some of the best songs on any given album are not played on the radio. I know. You see that point? Yeah. Yeah. We need to go that back to the community. Back in the days where you had the big bands, like, and only about very popular bands. Yeah. 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 When the electrons play, the whole of the thing is coming. When the blue rhythm play, all of the mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right, and all of the is coming. Mm-hmm. But the bands used to practice in the community, and they were based firmly in the That's right. right. But you don't even have to go so far as to use, say, Rihanna as an example, because we have right here Tumel Hill, who I honestly think they have some of the best quality in terms of song, production, music, their videos. And yet I don't hear a heavy rotation of Tumel Hill on the radio. But yeah, they, they're still to me. They do the thing. Yeah, they've they, they, they gone, they start depending on, and they've done their own thing. And I, I can't speak as to how successful financially they are, but at the very least, they have made themselves, established themselves as mm-hmm. a quality production. Yeah. So maybe we could take a leaf out of their book. Mm-hmm. And sure. they're a small group. I am assuming they're not super rich either, mm-hmm. but they've made it work for themselves. Mm-hmm. So can we learn from each other to figure out too how despite the radio stations not playing, despite these obstacles and these don't fall, how can we still give a quality product mm-hmm. and make ourselves successful? We have to get up there and mark ourselves more, mm-hmm. right? As they say, stop waiting on big gigs. Yeah. And for some people, it's very difficult yeah. because the ego yeah. is a very serious thing, right? Yeah. But then I have to just bite the bite, swag the bite, and take the music back. Because again, the music from the industry back in the 70s mm-hmm. because it had the support of the people. Yeah. The people used to hear it at rehearsal, mm-hmm. right? They used to hear it on the radio, and then they would go and hear it live. Like, mm-hmm. You know, the first thing I had to start doing things like that. Yeah. Actually, interestingly enough, at Boo, mm-hmm. was mm-hmm. the guys used to meet down with Boo. I, I was going to mention that you can not realize what came to mind. Now it's a music shop. It was a commercial, it was a commercial thing, but yeah. I don't even play. But some of the most amazing mm-hmm. music used to get played. Is like taking that kind of music and carrying the venues. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And start to build up your own thing, mm-hmm. right? Making some money for yourselves to the point where when you do it often enough, people, more and more people will come. Mm-hmm. And people reach that stage. Well, what about if you want to know how serious, um, if you want to know how serious the powers that be, um, if you want to know how serious they've actually taken. Um, Performances and so on. Look, look at the amount of performance centers we have in Raleigh. Yeah, the amount of performance centers we have in Raleigh. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's a lot. That's a whole other kettle of fish. And we, that we really need to do this thing yeah. on our own. Mm-hmm. Yep. So what do you say is the next step from here? Like right. we, we mentioned things about um, legislation. legislation. We talked about going to Chamber of Commerce and VHG and various organizations. From your perspective, what is the what do you think is the priority and what do you think the next step moving forward in terms of getting it to where it needs to be? I think that we need to restart UAB, um, United Artists of Barbados, um, as, as, a, as a start. And when I say artists, I don't just mean musicians. Um, so that we can be stronger together mm-hmm. to start lobbying these places. I think that the start it must happen with us. Do you think it would be difficult to get everyone together to have this this started? Because I don't, I don't think so. I think that these are desperate times. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, two or three guys together. You know? mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. really, quite honestly, musicians are the most difficult, difficult yes. people to <laughs> deal with. Not just and musicians. And the uh, artists. Artists, artists, yeah. Yeah. artists yeah. tend yeah. to be very yeah. difficult yeah. to organize yeah. those. Basically, I understand because it's so individualistic. It's yeah. Happening. It's not. It's not just you know, dancers you know, or artists. Yeah. It's just it's organizing. Um, like you mentioned previously, like because uh, you do the stuff for Karen and mm-hmm. and a lot of times, like I said, for example, there are people who have um, functions and would like to have somebody come. How do you go to you know where do you go to? Um, like if you had if you had the if you had the the the, U, the UA, what do you call it? UAB. 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 So if you had a UAB, that would be a start because somebody would be able to go there and say, look, this is what I'm looking for. How would somebody in the business sector who may want to do that, how would they start the process? Like where would they go? Is there a central person or do they have to call the person direct or you have is there they they probably have to call the person direct and there are a few uh, there are a few um, entertainment organizations as well, like per, uh, Pyramid and mm-hmm. and um, Crossfire Ventures and so on. There are a few of them. But I believe that that um, most 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 of people would not be contacted directly. Uh, that in itself is a business opportunity, I think. Mm-hmm. I think um, to be able to create um, create a, 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 a grouping that people can call and say, okay, I need so much, I need this, I need that, I need the third for performance as like this. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think we have a lot of that going on about it. Mm-hmm. But there's potential for that. Yeah. Yeah. Because okay. people, you know, I remember there was some launch events near me, uh, more stores opening, and I heard the person like warming up. I never even noticed the lady existed ever, mm-hmm. and I was like blown away. And I said, "Well, if I had, if I had to do this, then I would get someone like you." Um, her name is Debbie Rifo, oh, yeah. and but I never even knew she existed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I was just hearing her warm up. And I'm going like, "Where did this girl come from?" Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You know. So uh, so there are things like that. I think in terms of the marketing and promotion and. And being able to go forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. So we have gone over our time a little bit, but I definitely, definitely want to say thank you, a huge thank you for this start in the conversation because everything can't be solved obviously in our session. But thank you so much for your contribution, Adelaide and Bai. It really at least hopefully will help to get the ball rolling and also to see how your contribution to the economy comes into play and why your contribution is important even if you're not a fancy economist or a business owner we still have a contribution to make that is valid extremely valid and will help to move barbados forward especially with the foreign exchange i didn't i was not aware of how significant it was and 
we're losing valuable foreign exchange that we claim is supposed to be so precious, yet these are simple ways that we can help to make sure that it stays within the country and it's not being done. So hopefully we've generated some interest to be able to get some of these solutions moving and get the inertia going. I don't use that word again, but to get the ball going so that we can start having these practical solutions in place because that's what we're trying to do to see how we can actually get the ball going. So I don't know if David yeah, well, has anybody has any last uh, words. I, sorry, I, it was a thing to say. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much on behalf of getting the ball ahead. <laughs> well, uh, thank you for being here. Uh, it was a genuine pleasure. Mm -hmm. Quite often we we tend to look outside. Yeah. Uh, for solutions. We have this. In this yeah. case, we just need to look inwardly at ourselves, just and we may find a lot that can help us. Yes. No, I, it was a pleasure to have you all. I think um, from the feedback from the viewers, um, excellent discussion and. I think earlier people looking forward to a part two, so we can probably consider that in the future. But it was very enlightening, and I mean, mm -hmm. we must thank you and all the other entertainers for their commitment yeah, to Barbadian yeah. culture and taking long respect to you guys. Doing what you do, sometimes for minimal return and minimal reward, mm -hmm. um, but you, you you remain um, committed. So we have to thank you for that. Yeah. I just like to thank Nigel and RPV for coming tonight. Um, we're supposed to be neutral and biased, but the shirts from me and Crystal. Um, no, <laughs> I, I don't. I, I no, am biased. Well, I'm no, right biased. I know, I, know, I know Crystal very well um, yeah. for years now. And I um, know Crystal's a dancer. Yeah. Yeah, that's it with, um, with Keisha and all the others. Yeah. So Crystal's actually a very good dancer. Thank you. And um, involved in the entertainment industry in a big way. We tried to teach him, but. Yeah. I know. Uh, you know, I <laughs> tried to teach him to dance. A little bit, but. <laughs> You know, uh, so I'm sure that you you understand mm -hmm. a lot of what we feel. I do, and I do also. That way, it was very when you suggested bringing them together. As talented as Beijing performers are in across the different industries, I find getting them organized mm -hmm. is extremely difficult. So that's going to be a huge task ahead of you. I could. Well, not impossible. It's not impossible. It's not impossible, but. Hopefully you have they have the will to realize how important it is and that they need to discipline themselves and try to get this done. And CF is actually having a call for all dancers on Saturday to for the very same thing to try to see how they can get that industry planned out for twenty seventeen. Yeah, can, can, just let me say mm -hmm. um, when you go to that, right? Or if you go to that, yeah. just make sure that you let um, people know that um, dancers are not background. I, I think people like Rhythm Troy with Aisha Kamashana, a lot of other dancers are bringing know, that to the let forefront. I know that dancers are very much part of what's happening up front. Yep. Even though they may be behind the person that, 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 yeah. you know, that is performing, the main, the main performer, they are the main performance as well. It doesn't always feel that way, but thank you. Okay. <laughs> More the confidence. So, thank you everyone for joining in, for listening. I know this is. Let's not shelve the part two for any great amount of time, please. There is a plea from one of the words, so. <laughs> I know this is um, Shonda Land's night, the Thursday nights with the graves, the scandal, and the murder is back tonight. So I am very grateful that people still tuned in. And thank you very much for your attention, for your questions, for your comments. Please like, share, and continue with the love for the videos. Have a very, very blessed night. Bye.